Well hello everybody and welcome to Jeff's Baking Vlog. Today I'm going to make four fur or four far brides. Uh, so these are uh, pastries um, which encase minced beef basically which originate from the town of Forfar or Forfa in uh, Scotland. Very very tasty. Um, sometimes as today they have some uh, grated onion in them, but you can do them without grated onion and a little bit of seasoning. Traditionally, they're made with short crust pastry, but again, these days, uh, they can also be made with puff pastry, so it's a question of choice. And if you're using short crust or puff pastry and you can buy sheets of it ready rolled in the shop, uh, so much easier. But I'm going to use short crust and I'm going to make my own um, and it's actually quite a simple recipe but it takes a little bit of time because you make the dough and then you chill it before you roll it out and put the filling in and bake it. So I'll go on to the ingredients and for the ingredients I have 400 grams which is two and two third cups of plain flour that's based on scooping packed flour into a 250 milliliter cup and I have 140 grams, 10 tablespoons of cold unsalted butter. I also have 60 grams, a quarter of a cup plus a teaspoon of cold lard. Now um, you can use all butter, you could use 200 grams of butter um, if you wanted to instead of uh, the 60 grams of lard, but I think the lard gives the pastry just that extra little bit of crispness and, and uh, structure. I have 230 millilitres, one cup minus two teaspoons of cold water, three grams, half a teaspoon of salt, and then I have one egg, a medium egg, which would be large in the USA, which I'm going to um, beat and brush over the brides before I bake them. And then for the filling, I have 500 grams, which is 1.1 pounds of minced beef. I have a, a 150 grams, which is about three quarters of a cup of grated onion, 40 grams, which is slightly less than three tablespoons of unsalted butter, 45 milliliters, uh, three tablespoons of beef stock, three grams, one teaspoon of uh, mustard powder, that's an English mustard powder, three grams, half a teaspoon of salt, uh, a pinch of, nut, uh, of mace, uh, which is uh, the outer shell of the uh, nutmeg. Um, and if you don't have mace, you can leave it out or you can use uh, even less uh, nutmeg, but that's a pinch of mace. And then I have two grams, which is half a teaspoon of white pepper. So I don't need the ingredients for the filling at the moment because we're going to make the pastry. So I'll put those to one side. And I'm going to start the pastry uh, in the processor bowl of my um, immersion blender just for ease of cutting the butter and the lard into the flour basically. So I'm going to put my flour so I'm going to put the flour into the bowl Sprinkle over my salt. Then I'm going to add in the butter and the lard. And I'm simply going to process those or pulse them until the mixture uh, resembles a fine, fine breadcrumb.
and I think that's probably good enough. So I'm going to tip that into a larger bowl and with that in the bowl I'm going to um, add my water but I'm not going to add it all um, I'll add most of it and hold back two or three tablespoons and I start to mix that into a dough I just want to mix it enough to get it all combined into a dough and I'll add a little drop more water And I'll scrape the, the bowl and just, I'll use my hand in a minute to work it, but I just want to see how it's going. I'm going to add a little drop more water. So I still have at least a tablespoon left, but I think this might be enough. So I'll use my hand and squeeze it now and see if it all comes together. And that has just about come together. So I'm going to put that onto some plastic wrap and then I'm just going to squeeze it into a ball basically and flatten it into a disc and that's good enough so I'll wrap that up and I'm going to put that into the fridge so I'm going to chill it for an hour and then after an hour I'll come back, we'll make the filling, then we'll roll the dough out and assemble the bridies and then as the oven preheats we'll chill the bridies um, and when the oven is come to temperature we'll brush the bridies with some beaten egg and put them in the oven for baking. So I'm going to mix my um, filling for the uh, four far bridies and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in um, I've got the minced beef into a, a bowl. I'm going to sprinkle over the mustard, the salt, the white pepper and the mace. Then I'm going to put the onions in as well and my butter. And then I'm going to pour in um, my t three tablespoons of beef stock and I'm simply going to use the hand and thoroughly mix all of that together And with that mixed fairly well together, I'm going to set that aside until I need it. So my dough has been chilling for about an hour and I'm going to divide it fairly roughly into four pieces. 
Then I'm going to work with each of the pieces. to make one bridey each. So I'm just going to flatten that out and I'm going to roll it out into a rectangle of about 11 inches by 5 inches. And that's good enough like that. So then I'm going to take a quarter of my uh, minced beef mixture and I'm going to put it about halfway down on the pastry. I'm just going to flatten it a little bit and then I'm going to take some of my beaten egg and I'm going to brush that over the pastry and I'm going to fold the pastry over like that and press it down like that and then I want this to be a rounded edge so what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to take a fork and crimp the edge together all the way around like that and then I'm just going to cut the corner into a rounded shape like that and I need to put that onto a baking tray like that and I can put that in the fridge but I'll do another one first and then I'll actually roll out all four and chill them in the fridge and as they chill in the fridge I'll preheat my oven to 180 degrees uh, Celsius that's 160 Celsius with a fan 350 Fahrenheit and these will be ready to bake I've chilled my um, four far bridies in the fridge and my oven is now preheated and I have made two holes in the top of each one. It seems to me from what I've read that if you put one hole in the top it indicates that there's no onion in the bridie and if you put two holes in it indicates that there is onion in the bridie. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to brush the top with my beaten egg. Now I have seen some videos where they brush the top and the underside with the beaten egg um, and I don't want to do that. I think um, the underside will then, the egg will slightly burn on the underside and the pastry should cook well enough as it is. And then I'm going to put those into the oven and I'm going to bake them for 45 to 50 minutes 
um, until the pastry is cooked through and it's coloured nicely on the top. And if I test the internal temperature with my instant read thermometer, uh, the filling should be cooked to at least uh, 74, 75 degrees Celsius, about 167 degrees Fahrenheit, to ensure that the meat is cooked all the way through. At that stage, I'll take them out of the oven and put them onto a wire rack. Then I'll come back and show you the results. I baked my uh, bridies, my forefar bridies, for 50 minutes. I checked them after uh, sort of uh, 40 to 45 minutes and I thought that the underside wasn't quite cooked enough so I baked them for a further five minutes um, and they seemed to be baked up quite nicely so I took them out of the oven. Now I only have two left because um, my niece Hannah Mae Angel Face needed them for her dinner so I took two round to her and um, I've kept the other two for myself. So I'll show you what the two I've got look like and I'll cut one uh, down the centre just so you can see the inside as well and I should say that uh, mine baked up to an internal temperature of uh, 94 degrees Celsius which is about 200 Fahrenheit so I know perfectly well that they're cooked and I'll have a taste of this one very very good the pastry is delicious it's nice and flaky and tender and the filling um, is beefy I can just get a little hit of onion and the, the tiniest amount of that mace um, as well as the the pepper so these are very popular in Scotland and in other places. My sister in Canada was able to buy some recently and she enjoyed them immensely. In fact, it was her enjoying them that uh, prompted me to make them. So uh, that's going to be it for this recipe. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please give me the thumbs up below and click to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In the top right hand corner of the screen, there'll be an eye that you can click on and that will take you to a link for the recipe. And I'll put a link below the video as well. And I'll be back with another recipe in the very near future. So until then, happy baking.